Hey everybody, I'm Amy. I'm Dan. And we are the Hustle Couple coming at you today with the Daily Grind for Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. It's a rough one. It is a slightly rough one. So we're here. We're here. Um, yeah. Anybody that's new here, welcome. Hi. We're full-time resellers from Dallas, Texas, and we are providing you guys daily YouTube content. Uh, we're showing you how we pack and ship everything, stuff that has sold, and we also do a nightly live listing to... Uh, for motivation and to help out people that are just getting started, so. And seasoned people that just need some company. Yeah. Us. Us, right, Us, exactly. <laughs> so there's a lot going on in the world right now that we can't ignore, uh, but on the flip side of that, to keep our own sanity, we have to keep moving forward. Yeah. Uh, I have horrible OCD and it flares up really badly around things that I can't control and really empathetic situations. So I've gone to years of therapy and hopefully I can help you. Uh, a lot of when you're feeling down and you need to keep going, a lot of it is about shielding your inner self and making sure that you take care of yourself first and avoid the rabbit holes right. uh, for self-preservation because you can't help anything right you're in a helpless position so uh, i also used to be a school teacher for 10 years and when we would have really bad days um things that would happen we would lose a student or just bad things right and you just can't go on uh, i would do a little bit of reading to the students and it, it was like this really magical time where you could just like zone out and learn something yeah and not have to uh think about not burying your head in the sand, just a small distraction in a, in a sort of calming way. So yeah. that's what I'm going to do today. Right on. We're going to have a little story time about cotton. Yes. <laughs> so without trying to make light, um, we're going to learn. So here we go. Nice. Let's do it. I have these great books. They're really expensive. But if you're interested in this, these kind of books, there's three of them. One about cotton, one about wool, and one about silk. Yes. They're on Amazon, and they have little swatches in them that I'm going to show you. They're the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to go through. There's a lot of types of cotton, and I was just going to do four, but since since we all need some time today, we're going to give ourselves some grace and learn. Let's do it. Okay. The first type of cotton we will talk about, I'm going to skip some of the, the more intricate ones. But okay. this one, broadcloth. What is broadcloth? Okay, you feel this. What okay. does that feel like to you? This feels like, I mean, I can't put my finger on it. The specific oh, yes, you type can. of clothing. It feels like a, I don't know, I want to say like a flag, but that's <laughs> not right. It feels like a men's dress shirt. Okay. <laughs> think about it now. Think of a dress shirt. Yeah. And think about what you're feeling. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's a little stiff and it's a little smooth. Right. And, yep. Many okay. dress shirts are made from a broadcloth cotton. It's just a straight weave got a little texture to it. You could starch it and make it really, really nice. You can iron it, you can steam it. It's great. Uh, some broadcloths are made of something called Pima cotton. I've heard of that. Or Su Pima cotton. I've heard of that also. Okay, so let's learn what those are. Cool. All right. Uh, it is Pima cotton, yeah. just Pima, is made in irrigated fields of Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and California. Okay. Did you know that? I did not. I didn't actually either <laughs> until I just read this little thing. The fine high-grade cotton was developed from a cross between the two best cottons, Egyptian and Sea Island cotton. Okay. Pima has extra long brownish fibers and is used to make the fine needed goods and expensive woven fabrics. The label, if the label says Su Pima, mm -hmm. ah, I've seen that too, it means the product is made from extra long staple Pima cotton grown in the Southwest by one of the 4,000 members of the Su Pima Cotton Association of America. Oh, of course there's an association. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it, that's like it's extra label of authenticity. I see. Su okay. Pima cotton is super, 
<laughs> super uh, nice yeah. and expensive and exclusive. Yes. But Pima Cotton's also an elevated version. So I would put that in your listing and your title if it is in fact Pima Cotton. Yeah, I mean, if the if the manufacturer or the designer is going to take the time to call out a different type of cotton, you should absolutely do that in your listing as well. Right. Okay. Cool. Some clothing is made of canvas. Okay. You know that. What kind of clothing? Cargo shorts. Yeah, cargo shorts or like uh, <laughs> Carhartt overalls, yep. utility jackets. Chinos, kind of. Yes. Yep. Uh, the general term canvas is used for a variety of stiff, heavy, durable fabrics originally made from linen or hemp and used for sails. That's the original uh -huh. purpose. Okay. Today, canvas is usually made of cotton mm -hmm. with a tight, plain weave. There are many grades and it's often treated to be water repellent so there's a chemical put on it okay. so that it the beads up yep. we also see canvas and umbrellas and um, things like that for outdoor patio furniture yeah okay very stiff so instead of saying just cotton overalls that means something different than a canvas overall those okay. are going to be made for work and durability yeah okay uh oh canvas is quick to mildew so you got to be careful about moisture around canvas okay the first sign of trouble is a bad odor, followed uh -oh. by appearance of dark spots. The odor can be removed with hot water and bleach, but once the spots have taken hold, mildew is nearly impossible to control. Warning. Warning. All right, we're gonna get into the great chambray debate. Okay. Okay. There's a great debate? There is. <laughs> because what resellers call chambray is not actually the authentic meaning uh, of chambray. Uh, Doesn't mean that you can't call it that, right? Okay. There's this connotation that chambray is like those jean looking shirts that are flowy. Yes. They're very soft. Yes. But those shirts are made of tensile and right. we know that tensile is not cotton. Right. Tensile's plastic. Yes. <laughs> it's very soft though. And if you don't put tensile in the dryer, it gets very stiff. Tensile loves the dryer. Isn't that weird? That is very Nothing weird. loves it. Cotton definitely doesn't love the dryer. It yeah. will shrink. But uh, mm -hmm. the original chambray feels, feel, feel. Feel, feel. Oh, that's nice. Yep. Soft. Okay. So this was usually used. You ever heard of a blue collar worker? I'm going to show you this swatch. Totally. Yes. This blue. Ooh, it's good. It's we'll move your face. It's not my face. It's, it's your the face. White. It's the white. Aha, uh -huh, it was your face. It's the paper. Reflecting. All right. Imagine a blue dress shirt that you see at the thrift. That's like a uniform type shirt. Yes. That's chambray. Oh. It is soft and comfortable and it's made with white filling. So one of the wharfs or the wefts is white and it makes it look kind of casual. Okay. A weathered look, this says. Weathered, yes. It may be a blend of cotton and polyester. That's more modern. Mm -hmm. But this is, there's a little tag here that says end of an era. No, it says end, and end. Oh, it says end, and <laughs> end. Oh, I know why. Because the fabric is woven end to end. And this is where we get a selvage edge on fabric. And we can talk about that. That's not exactly related to cotton, but a lot of jeans have a selvage edge. Uh -huh. And that means it's, it's woven all the way to the end of the loom. And so you can take, they have a special way to finish the end of the loom. So you can take it off the loom without losing any fabric. Okay. End to end. Okay. The edge looks a little weird, self-edge. Self-edge is what it means. Okay, because normally you have to you have to leave some, what, yarn or straw or whatever yeah. at the top. Yeah, it's all dangly. It right yeah, and you tie it off, exactly. Okay. Okay. But the selvage means that they weave <clears throat> it so tight at the edge that it can maintain its own integrity. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, and chambray is made like that. Nice. Okay, a chenille. Feel the chenille, we remember this from the 90s. Remember everyone was wearing chenille? Yeah. Do you guys yeah. remember these chenille? I was wearing a chenille sweater the other day. It was pink and it had buttons. It was chenille. That's fabric. I mean, okay. that's cotton okay. fabric. And it's fluffy yarn and the pile protrudes similar to velvet. Mm -hmm. So that means that they've woven it and then they chop off the top of it so that it can... Okay. Oh, that's how they do that. Yes, ah. yes, yes. And in the chenille... But this is, it's not as fuzzy as like a velvet. No, no, no. Okay. In the chenille, they just weave it, but they don't chop it. Okay. So it's like loosely woven on the top. Let's see if we can show them. Let's let's try. Let's We're gonna try. try. We're gonna. Can I rip this off here? We're gonna try. So they don't. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not really. Grabbing I'm it. trying. I'm like all up in here. Yeah. Oh. I'm in here. It's not doing it. Okay. Okay. So 
They weave it a little looser. It looks a little bit like tweed, but it's much softer. Mm -hmm. And they don't chop off the top. If they did chop off the top, then it would have a pile, and then it would be velvet or velveteen. Okay. Okay. Chino. Yeah, here's the chino. Chino or khaki pants. Yep. And yep. it doesn't have to be a khaki color, but we call them khaki pants or work pants, mm -hmm. and they are a cotton twill. Well, it tells you about khaki here, right here. Back in the, you want to read that? Sure, you, you it says, it. back in the 1800s, before Chino was Chino, it was used to make uniforms for British troops in India who waged a war against dust. So soldiers dyed their white uniforms with coffee and curry powder and called them khaki, which is the Hindu word for the color of the dust. That is so interesting. I just learned something. Yes. Cool. Okay, cool. All right. Now we have Look, skipping upside down. He's like upside down cat. It. The net. It's a rough day. The next thing is corduroy. Oh, I know corduroy. Okay. Yep. Thick and rugged. It has a pile to it, and you can feel corduroy. Most corduroy is made of cotton. Uh huh. Although some these days everything's mixed with plastic. Do you want to read about the royal pass? I would love to. Thank you. This says corduroy got its name in the 1600s when the popular fabric was worn by servants of the French king and dubbed cord du roi, which is French for cord of the king. There you go. Wow. Yep. Okay. Okay. Our favorite cotton to date is called denim. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Except yes. that you have to remember that denim on its own, cotton does not stretch. Okay. Right? Right. So all these jeans that we have these days have a little stretch in them, meaning that they're mixed with some kind of spandex or lycra or something like that. Yep. Yep. So would you like to read about indigo blues, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, this says the dark blue warp yarns of the original denim were dyed with indigo, a natural dye extracted from the indigo plant. Okay. Uh, the blue fabric was difficult to produce mainly because cotton and indigo are not compatible. Didn't know that. Okay. Early fabrics had streaks, uneven shading, and a tendency to fade and bleed in the wash. Ironically, it was exactly these traits that made <laughs> denim so popular. The more it faded, the more we liked it. Most denim fabrics are now colored with a synthetic indigo dye that's easier to control. Great. Nice. And yeah, I've noticed that. Lots and lots and lots of jeans have a separate care tag on the inside that says warning the indigo will fade or <laughs> whatever yeah absolutely okay um i'm gonna skip some of these more more un yeah okay yeah okay flannel i uh, love flannel many flannels are not cotton anymore but we love a cotton flannel right. is that traditionally flannel is made from cotton mm -hmm. okay because all of these things that we're learning this month are pre-synthetic fabrics. We haven't okay. really learned about synthetic fabrics because I don't really intend to like them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, brush cotton, give right. us the, the lowdown. It says, flannel's soft, fuzzy surface is produced by feeding the fabric over a revolving brush to raise the fiber ends to the surface, creating a slight fuzz or a thick nap that may be very compact or loosely formed. The fibers are then trimmed, brushed flat, or left in a raised upright position. The finished fabric is warm because brushing creates air space that traps the heat. There you go. Okay, it's very soft. Do not confuse flannel with felt. Don't do it. Felt is smashed together fibers. Felt is the plywood. Particle board. Particle board, that's what I mean. Particle board of fabric. Flannel is a woven. It's yeah. really, really strong. It's warm. So if you get like a Pendleton flannel shirt, it's a nice shirt. Yeah. That thing has been through its processes yeah. versus a felt shirt. You can feel the difference. Felt is not soft. It's scratchy and uh, icky. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we're learning. Yes. Now, how about gingham? What about, I didn't know gingham was a separate kind of fabric. It's a special kind of, well, it's about how the fabric is dyed and how ah. it's woven. Okay. okay. So we're, we're going to talk about gingham in, and seersucker because they're very specific. Sure, okay. Okay. Oh, I get to read the box? Uh -huh. Sweet. Uh, yarn dyed fabric is made with yarns that are dyed before they're woven into cloth. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get the, the lighter. Oh, the darker. I get it. Okay. And it's on both sides. Okay. If it was printed, it would be dark on one side and not on the exactly other. Exactly right. Let's see, a, a method used to produce plaids, stripes, checks, tweeds, and iridescent fabrics. 
Gingham's colored checks are formed where dyed yarns intersect. Lighter colored checks are formed where the dyed yarns cross white yarns, and white checks are formed where the white yarns intersect. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, and then where the two dyed yarns intersect, that's where you get the darker. The darker. So you cool. want to make sure that if you're if you're actually calling something gingham, I know this is terrible. It's just it's that it's the same on both sides. See how it's the same? I think you can see that. Kinda. It's just it's Hold so on. We're it's go, so we're coming it's in. so bright. We're coming in. There we go. Oh, look at that. There you go. Okay, now flip that thing over. Flip it. You gotta, you gotta flip it. You gotta flip it. There's the back side. Look at it, exactly the same. Yep. Okay. Nice. Hey. All right. Okay, next. Yo, you're learning everything today. That's right. Now, we learned about Jersey already. We did. We learned about it. Now, oh, we can learn about muslin. Okay. Muslin is used to make fabric samples, pattern samples. Right. And we find these sometimes at the thrift. Yeah. So it'll be a shirt made of muslin that is weird. It's like a shirt, but it's not a real fabric, right? Yeah. It's made out of something. Muslin is cheap. Yeah. And um, it's a it's it off white. It looks, yeah, it's off white. It has like some kind of specks in it. Right. So yeah. if you find something like that at the store, it could be really valuable because it could be what's called a sample. And if it's from a really high end brand sample, like if that's their, what do you call it? Test uh, prototype. Prototype. Look for it. Yeah, because chances are, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, but like, if you found a muslin sample from a very high-end designer, chances are that the actual designer touched and cut and measured the actual thing. If that, you find my muslin garment, I'm not a real like top-notch <laughs> designer, but I made that. Right. I drafted it. I made the pattern. I sewed it and I showed it to somebody. I made that. Yeah. So what if you found like a McQueen muslin or something? What? Mm. Just saying. I mean, McQueen's dead. Sorry. Rest in peace. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're getting to the end here. Okay. PK. PK. We mentioned it many times on our channel. We did. In this polo is an shirts. this is an exaggerated PK. Yes. Yes, for sure. So a PK is something with a dot like texture on the top of it. A polo shirt is the perfect example of an everyday PK. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm poplin. Poplin. We have so much poplin, and we don't often know what it is. You know what they make poplin? Raincoats. <laughs> you cheater! I, see, I did. Trench coats. They're oh, often a poplin. Okay. okay. okay like, tell the, like the standard khaki yeah? trench coat. Okay. Yeah. Poplin is popular for raincoats because the fabric is naturally water repellent. Cool. The tight weave works together with the fabric's crosswise ribs which swell when they get wet, forming such a dense web that the water from an ordinary rain shower will run right off. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. right. This has polyester cotton blends repel rain better than all cotton versions because this synthetic fiber doesn't absorb water at all. Interesting. Cool. Okay. Not waterproof, however, but... It's good. It's good for a raincoat. Do you ever wonder when you pick up like a trench coat, you're like, how the heck? Because right. it doesn't feel why, plastic. -y. Why is this a raincoat? Right. Yeah, exactly. You wear this on the rain and it's okay. <laughs> it's a poplin. It okay. is okay. Okay, seersucker. Deer, All of our summer menswear. Okay, seersucker almost always looks like this, right? It feels like this. Right, but it almost always looks like this as well. Like with the same color. Yeah, and bring it in. And... Bring it in. I'll focus you. Okay. There you go. Okay, lift it off so you can see how thin it is. Okay, see, that's like that blue and white stripey. It could be pink and white sometimes, yeah. but it has that like ripple texture. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Read us the box. What's All the right. box say? The first seersucker was a linen cloth with alternating flat and puckered stripes made in the East Indies. This fabric gets its name from the Persian word shurushakar, which translates literally to describe a cloth of milk and sugar. Hmm. In the 1930s, seersucker became popular in the U.S. for summer suits because of the crisp, because the crisp, cool fabric did not show wrinkles and could be laundered easily. In the 60s, wash and wear fabrics took its place, but it remains popular for other uses. Yep, all uh, almost all seersucker stuff is made for summer. Yeah, it, it's <clears throat> yeah, definite. Shirting, but we already went over that broadcloth. It's kind of the same thing. Yep. Terry cloth okay. is made of cotton. Yes. Okay. Terry cloth or uh, towels, bath, bath towels, bath robes. Yeah. Okay, box. Read the box. 
Okay, most terry cloth is made with cotton because the absorbent fiber gets stronger when wet and it can be sanitized in very hot water using strong bleach and detergent without harm. There well, you go. That's good. there you go. Terry cloth also may be made with a cotton polyester blend, which sounds like a bad idea at first because polyester does not absorb moisture. But the fabric usually has blended yarns only in the background weave and selvages to add strength and durability. The all cotton loops absorb the moisture. Love it. Yep. You can find swim cover-ups made of terry cloth as well. There's a lot of clothing that's made of this, especially yep. in like the 2000s. People yep. are going crazy for it. Okay, I think we're at the end here. Are we done? Uh, Almost? Yeah, let's yes. talk about velvet and velveteen and then we'll be done. Well, okay. So velveteen is smoother. Velvet is higher. It you can like push it one way and then push it the other way. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Like, like draw a pattern. With yeah, your yeah, hand. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but velveteen is much closer to the surface. It's got um, a what a shorter pile. Yes, it does have a shorter pile. Okay. You can feel that? Yeah. It feels a little bit like suede, but a it's bit. a cotton. Okay. And oftentimes, velvet is made. Velveteen is made of cotton all of the time. Right. And then velvet. It can be made of anything really because you just weave it and then you give it a haircut mm -hmm. and so the pile stands up okay so depending on how soft and or absorbent you need the velvet to be mm -hmm. it can be made of any any fiber a lot of times velvet velvet is started being made by silk okay but it's so expensive and you cut off the top of it so like you're wasting the magical silk right to right. have something a hundred percent silk velvet is unheard of these days <laughs> royalty used to wear that yeah but I can't even imagine it. Normal How velvet. Expensive that would be. Yes, yeah. normal <laughs> velvet has about ten percent silk in it, and then most most of it's polyester fibers or something like that. But a true velveteen, and this is what we see on the runways, it, it drapes beautifully on the body. Velveteen is used, and it's a cotton, and it, it it's moisture wicking mm -hmm. kind of. Um, so a lot of these, I remember these dresses in the 90s yeah. being made of velveteen. Totally. It's a very high-end fabric. If you ever find something made of it, like I said, it feels like suede to your fingers. Yep. And you're like, this isn't suede. Ah, it's a velveteen. <laughs> a lot of furniture was made from velveteen in the 1960s and 70s. Think of grandma's couch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Yeah? You thinking about it? <laughs> Even the couches with like little farm scenes like in them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a velveteen. You can, if you brush it upways, it's kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Know. Okay. So I think that's it. We've learned about cotton. Hooray! There is a lot to know. Again, these books are uh, written and illustrated by Julie Parker. And, and they're, they're called All About Cotton, All About Wool, and All About Silk. Yep. Great references because they have the swatches so you can feel them and compare them to your garment yep. if you're new to... They're expensive. I think they're $100 each. Yeesh. I mean, I had to get them for grad school, but <laughs> worth it. Right? If Worth you're it. interested, if you're down this rabbit hole with us, yeah. then maybe it's something to consider asking for a gift or putting on a wish list. There you go. Okay, we have some things to ship. We Five have, or six? We have six things to ship that I know of yeah. and six returns. Yay. So, insult to injury, on this rough day, we got a million returns. Yeah, it's fun, you know, but you, it gotta, happens. you just got to deal with it as they come. So, we're going to go pull all of our sales and we will see you at the shipping station. Action. All right, people. We have our six parcels going out on eBay, pulled and ready to go. So. I have many lessons to tell you about this. So yes. last night on our live list, I was like, well, we've been listing junk for the past two days. We need to stop doing that because nothing's going to convert and our store is going to be bloated. And I do believe this. But this is just to say that we cannot, no matter how much we try, predict buyer behavior. <laughs> we just can't. Right. So we were listing five Brioni sport coats a night and then 15 pieces of what I call junk, but just like lower dollar plush and things like that, right? T-shirts, just filler for our store. We do like to sell that stuff, but it doesn't always flip that quickly. It wasn't anything like in high demand with an insane sell-through rate, okay? And before that, we were listing Eileen Fisher pants, which take a while to sell. So this week we've been listing some pretty niche things and we were playing a little bit of a long game. We didn't expect, but then we're like, oh no, we better listen quick flippers because our store metrics are going to go down. Tell me why some of this stuff flipped overnight. I the weirdest <laughs> things of all time. Where's the bagel shirt? Where's the bagel shirt? Right here. Y'all remember this bagel shirt? We showed you in a haul and we showed you <laughs> listing it. It sold in two days. Yeah. And there was many of these listed I don't know why our sold. I did price it low. Okay, maybe. And we did sell two plush things overnight. 
two plush things overnight that the, of all the plush, the ones I thought would never sell, we sold. No, don't show them. Don't show them. <laughs> you just wait okay. for it. All right. All right, so we sold these Eileen Fisher pants. Let me show you the Eileen Fisher logo for the millionth time. We sell this stuff like crazy. Right. The key is, what's the key, Dan? Don't overprice it. Don't overprice it. It will sell. Just don't overprice it. Yeah. So what do we sell these for? We sold these for $52 plus uh, shipping. So I put all the Eileen Fisher pants at $59.95, which is a little bit overpriced. But then... Every, and I put it at eight ninety nine shipping or something, and everybody always just like sends an offer minus the shipping because it makes them feel better. Like free shipping, fine, okay. But I really just wanted forty for them, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I leave myself room for offers, and if somebody comes in, I knew what my lowest price because I looked at all the comps. You guys saw me list this, yeah. And I was like, these are worth about forty, so I'm gonna price them at sixty and take all the offers, and I got a fifty two. Perfect. Yes. What do they weigh? 13. 13. Perfect. So they're going to go first class. All right. You want to save it, so we'll skip it. We'll, we'll skip the plush. Okay, this is just like a lame -o situation. Yeah, I just... bought this for a play, and I didn't end up using or a film. It is just a pillowcase from are they, Ikea. Are they dish towels or pillowcases? Oh, yeah. It's a dish towel. Okay. <laughs> I have a pillowcase over there. This is the dish towels. Yeah. They're just dish towels. Ikea dish towels. But they had a barcode, and I'm like, well, they're in my house. So you're going to sell them. I'm, I'm, <laughs> am I gonna? I'm gonna sell them. They didn't sell for much though. Um, eight ninety five. They were just sitting in my house. Right. Eight ninety five. That's probably. Why that, don't you just put them in there? Long way. Is that cheaper <laughs> than you can get them at? Like, I don't want to. Okay, I've already. Well, they're discontinued, so maybe somebody really wanted those dish towels. Right. That's the thing with IKEA. They, IKEA loves to discontinue stuff. Mm-hmm. So you had a whole. You had a, a whole. I have a business plan. plan. I know. I have a plan on Ikea. <laughs> but I need a warehouse. Yeah, we need some serious storage space. We have an Ikea kitchen, and I think that if one of your cabinet doors goes out, like if, you know, you get a bad water stain or mark, yeah. that you would pay tons of money to replace it. Absolutely. That. So I just want to buy it all <laughs> and sit on it. Seven, Seven ounces. ounces. So that guy. All right, let's pack up this amazing bagel shirt. So I just want to be clear though. I'm not saying go to Ikea and buy all the dish towels. I think people will watch YouTube and think of it literally. What the lesson here is, find stuff you're not using in your house and list it. Yeah. Okay, this is the bagel shirt. It was Lay's, it was like <laughs> merchandise. Uh, what do you call this? So like uh, marketing swag. Marketing swag. It says Lay's on the back. You can't see it. But it's just bagels. And I bought it at the thrift kind of as a joke because it was 99 cents. What do you need? I was just looking for these smaller um, poly mailers. It's okay. I got this guy. So anyway, it was a dollar. I think we got it less than that. Yeah, 99 cents. I'm like, I want this bagel shirt. <laughs> And then I, mean, when I came home, I thought it was going to be one of a kind, you know, because I didn't comp it in the store. It was a bagel yeah. shirt. I just got it. But novelty prints. Love novelty prints. And then there was a bunch of other ones listed, and I was like, ah! Oh. <laughs> what did it sell for? Uh, it sold for... Where'd it go? Bagel shirt. $24.95. Girl! <laughs> $24.95 for a bagel shirt! Plus yep. shipping! Plus shipping. Boom! Boom. All right, these are super sweet. Super sweet. I bought these for you at the thrift and then you didn't like them. I know. But the internet loves them. These are a bolo. These are, these are super cool. Bolo means be on the lookout. Yes. These are vans, but they're not just any vans. They are like dress shoe looking vans. Wingtip vans. They get the wingtips and they're a size 10 and a half men's and they are very sought after. I don't know if they're rare, but what they're is, sought after. We didn't weigh the bagel shirt. Bagel weighs 10 ounces. Thank you. So these shoes, I just looked them up and you know. Okay, they're going to Arizona. So. Let's try a regional. Y'all confused about regional boxes. It's okay. It's okay. $9.27 for a regional A. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And sometimes regional boxes won't work. Sometimes the shoe box is just as good as the regional box. Or cheaper. It, just, it really just, just depends. This doesn't fit in there. Those are not... Not even a little bit going to fit in there. Because mm -mm. you got two. Well, I might be able to, like, check you this You crazy. Out. Why don't you use the other configuration, the long one? 
Girl, why are you doing this? Check, I'm just trying something. Do the I'm long trying. one. Do the long one. Do one like this. No. No, that's no, not, it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. So. So. These were comping around $100, so I put ours at $125, and then we got an offer. I think they sold for $90 or something. How much did they sell for? $87. $87. I took it. Because <laughs> I bought these for $6.99 at the thrift. I remember because I bought them for you. I don't want to smush them. I think that's okay. Well, why don't you see the shoe box versus the regional? Sometimes Right. Okay, so the, the what did same. I say? The regional was $9.27. Okay, let's do the shoe box. Uh, can you give me an accurate weight on those guys, please? With the box? Two, four. Two, four, nine, five, fifteen, right? Oh, uh, no, seven. Seven, five, fifteen? Yeah. Seven, five, fifteen. But don't you round up? Nine, sixty-four. Same, right? Uh, Regional box would be forty cents cheaper. Yeah. So. But you don't, you put seven, but seven and a half. And That's just half. under seven and a half. That's three eighths. Oh, you're looking at the outer. I'm looking. At this is no, no, seven. Inner. No, no. And this is half. inner diameter. You need the outer diameter. Why would the outer be less than the inner? Because well, the thickness of the cardboard. Wouldn't on be both more? sides, it's it, three eighths is is more than it's one eighth more than a half. Wait, no, not, no, it's not. No, it's not. What's happening? This is why we do use. That must that must be a misprint. Maybe this should be five eighths instead of three eighths. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't understand it. <laughs> That's gotta be a yeah. I just call. I just copy. You know what I'm saying? Copy editor, right here. Hire me, post office. Are you watching this? I got you. Okay, but either way, it's the same price. It's nine sixty four for the shoe box, and the regional would be. Okay, let's use the shoe box since they paid eighty seven dollars for these six dollar vans. Yeah. And it would just be better. I agree with that. And they're leather, so that makes. I picked these up because I thought Dan would think they were funny, and he could wear them with like a tuxedo shirt. He did not think they were funny for some reason. I don't know why. Stop throwing me under the bus. No, I'm I don't just... know why. They're great. <laughs> they are. I just don't wear vans. Oh. I don't That's know. Fine. I don't wear. Vans. I tried it. I tried it once. I got three different pair. I, I just, oh, I've been selling them, too. Yeah. <laughs> They're just not... I don't know. Alright, what do you need? Packing paper or something? Yeah, I wouldn't use the packing I paper. I can't reach it. I can't reach anything in my own office. I'm just to put it in the diagonals. Well, even, even so, yeah, it's not really... It. Nope. Yeah, I'm just going to use a quality or something. We're just wrap them. We got tissue. Yeah, uh, but no, like I said, they're, they're leather, and I, I would hate, you know, I could just see them sitting in a puddle somewhere. Yeah. Come on. So I would consider these novelty. If it's novelty, I'll pick it up. I almost bought these Tribe Cog Quest vans. I'm telling you, if they weren't priced so high, they were priced at 25 Ooh. But they would have sold for like 80 But see, I got these for 60 and they sold for 87 So, I mean, I got them for six. 6 So that's a better. But 25 I was like, ooh. But those Tribe Club Quest, remember when I showed you? Yes. They were cool. Any kind of novelty vans, I always look up. All right. Dan has some Beavis and Butthead vans. They're amazing. Uh, and Beavis and Butthead is coming back as old men. Y'all. The world needs this right now. We need Beavis and Butthead right now. Yeah, if you haven't heard, Mike Judge has confirmed there is a new Beavis and Butthead movie in the works. My, my heart needs this. And they're all old. It's so good. Yeah. And it's it's going where? Paramount Plus? Yeah, or it's like one, of, one of those services. Yeah, because yeah, Paramount Plus is MTV. Oh, that's right. MTV. I can't. Uh, I can't sing anymore. It's very upsetting to me. I haven't been practicing. You gotta, you gotta get back at it. Normally I used to sing in the car, but I haven't been driving anywhere, so. All right. Out of practice. Seven, five, fifteen, two pounds, four ounces. All right, now we get into the wacky plush. Ready? Wacky. Both of these sold overnight. All right. Uh, this one. This this is you as a, a bear. <laughs> Hello. There were no uh, comps on this one except for on Worth Point a couple of years ago. One of these sold. 
so I just priced it for what it, you know, I priced it higher because it has the tag, but inside it says to mom from Linda and Carl. Oh, Linda and Carl. I put that in the listing and then her dress <laughs> is like all jacked. It's all old from, it's just, it's jacked, but she's so cute. So I priced her at 40 and we had two offers on it. We did. We had an email offer and then we also, so maybe I should have priced it higher, but then someone just bought it straight up. So I'm really happy about that. Somebody was like, would you take 32? And by the time we saw the message, someone else had already bought it. Right. And the message about taking 32 came from somebody overseas. Right. So maybe this is sought after. Maybe I should have priced it higher. <laughs> but you know what? How much do we pay for it? 15 cents. 15 cents. And it sold for how much? What did we say? 39.95. doesn't fit in here. Uh, so this oh, is no. this is from the bin. I mean, from my junk bag. Remember when you saw all the junk on my desk and I was just going through the bags and showing you? I just set her in there. So there were 75 things that I had to list, and I think I got it done with 60 things. So 15 each. 15 cents. So 40 bucks. It's hard to price things when... Mm. <laughs> uh, don't break that phone. I know, I know. Nope. Yes, no, that that four by four by four does not work. It never works. We need a five by five or a six by we six. We really do. We really do. I really cannot, and that's not even that. Oh yeah, I should fit in that. That's perfect. This is like the fourth time we tried to use this box <laughs> for something. It was waiting. <laughs> so I think with pricing, a lot of you, we talk about this a lot in our group. It's hard to know. Uh, some one of these sold for twenty four ninety five. I think when I looked on Worth Point. And that was in like 2015 or something. So I just guessed at 40 because I didn't want it sitting around forever. And what's the most I could have gotten for it? You know, like if I wait like maybe a hundred, you know what I mean? You gotta think about it that way. I don't feel bad about making 40, you know, 80 times my investment. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you're looking purely at like a percentage or, or you know a return on your investment that way i mean this is a no-brainer put a little paper in there yeah and it sold overnight which i will remind you especially for the new people selling things overnight is so important to your ebay metrics the conversion rate so basically it's fine i'll just talk over it it's fine basically <laughs> Hi. Go. <laughs> Basically, wait. just go. <laughs> <laughs> eBay looks at your, eBay's algorithm is like, hey, these people are, uh, what do you call it, listing stuff that people want to buy. Great. Right. We'll keep pushing them out because they're making us money. So that oh, those overnight sales are crucial. So if I had overpriced it, maybe we would have lost the sale. Okay, six point. All right, all right, y'all. So, mm -hmm. so somebody in our group, Gretchen, asked about these. Y'all, I don't know. This is a, a little freaking thing wrapped up in a pineapple pizza. I don't know, but it was in a junk bag. So I paid 15 cents for it, and there was a ton of these listed. Apparently, they're, like, surprise when you open them, but, like, the surprise is already, hi, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> somebody ruined the surprise. And anyway, this is like a turtle. He looks like he's like tubular. <laughs> and this is a pineapple pizza that he's wrapped up in. Yeah. I don't know. I... There was a ton of these. None sold. Okay. None. So I was like, all right, I've already gone through this much <laughs> hassle. I told Gretchen not to buy them. I'm like, these are terrible. Do not buy them. I still stand by that. Do not buy these. Sold overnight. <laughs> it did sell overnight, but for $9. $9. Free shipping. Yeah. I had to price it below everybody's, and I put free shipping, and I promoted it at 5%. Ooh. But 5% on $9 right. is nothing. Right. Like, okay, sorry, take my 45 cents or whatever it is, sorry. you know? So I'm okay. It's sold. And I, I'm just trying out this pricing strategy of just going under every single person and then doing 5% promotion and free shipping for the stuff like this. And dang it, it didn't work. It worked. I don't know if it's always going to work, but if you have stuff lying around that would uh, otherwise you wouldn't list, maybe try it. Mm -hmm. Looks like I win. Seven. Seven. All right. And, wow. Cool. Let's get these labels Where's printed out. This ticket? Okay. So 15 cents for that guy. So still making some good money on him. That's right. And it was a conversion, so hopefully our store gets a little bit of a boost since we had, I think, three overnight conversions, which yeah. is fantastic. 
Okay, we do have one sale on Poshmark going out. Oh yeah, we sold a mystery box on Poshmark. We have mint wet. Hi. Hi. I have brain damage, and so when I get stressed out, I can't speak. It's fine. Um, we have mystery boxes, men's and women's, on Poshmark. We're getting low on them, but we still have them. They're meant for you guys. They're stuff that we were overwhelmed with, and we put them in boxes. And so whenever you need inventory and you can't get out, then they'll be there for you. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you for buying them. Many of you have. Thank you. And hopefully you will make money. I mean, that's the, yeah, that was the plan. It's all stuff that we would happily list ourselves. We just don't have space. Right. We filled up a conversion van with stuff we wouldn't list. Right. Uh, so the mystery boxes don't have, like, mall brands and stuff like that. They're mostly... Some of them... We put a Dolce & Gabbana in one of them. Blue, Lululemon two, in one of them. Three, four, mm, who's getting five. that stuff? I don't know. Well, we got six. We got six. Cool. Made it. Made just it. Just made it. Number one, Eileen Fisher Pants. Eileen Fisher Crepe. Blue pants. Yep. Number two. Born to talk teddy bear. Number three. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good towels. Sales are still slow, but they're coming in, so just got to keep listing. Keep your nose to the ground. Uh, this is the pizza thing. Oh, pizza. Sorry, we had bagel. So was it right. a bagel bite or... Because <laughs> that would have been both. Oh, my God, right? Mm, bagel bite. Mm. There's a keto recipe for bagel bites. Shut up. Totally. Okay, these are the vans. That's a very appropriate street address. Mohawk Lane. <laughs> I love it. You think they move there on purpose? They're probably. Like, probably. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> and the bagel shirt. Y'all, I'll never turn down a novelty print. I said, that is going in the cart. Dan was like, what in the heck? I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I mean, people were asking about you know our flat first class shipping that we charge. We charge all of our buyers four ninety nine for first class shipping. Yeah. And just so you can. Hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everything. Get it. Get it. No. Everything except the. Wait, there's a spider. We have a spider. Don't kill a spider. Oh God! All right, everything except the shoot the van's shoes is going first class. Uh, like I said, we charge four ninety nine for all of that. But our actual cost, so the Eileen Fisher pants were five ninety six, so there's a little bit of an overage there. Ninety six, ninety seven cents. Yes, um, but then the teddy bear was three eighty eight. The uh, dish towels were three eighty eight. The pizza thing was three eighty one, and then the bagel shirt was four sixty eight. So, you see what I mean? This is why we say it all kind of washes out to net zero at the end of the year. And it looks better on our listings. It looks better to have four ninety nine because sometimes we edge out the competition with our shipping price. Yeah. Than five ninety nine. Right, and we're able to do that and stay competitive because we're in Texas. So we're able to ship to both coasts for less. You know, if you're on one of the coasts, uh, you may have to, you know, charge an extra. I don't dollar. know what to do about this spider. I'm, I'm just, I don't know what to do. There's really not much we can do except. Uh, you gotta go put it outside. I'm so superstitious about killing spiders. Why? Because I heard one time that it gives you bad luck. And uh, we why. do not need any bad luck. All right, I got... Oh, oh. Oh, oh, he got it. That's Charlotte's web. No, you can't kill Charlotte right now. Well, he... It's... What are you going to do? He just used his web and went all the way down. Did you all see that? <laughs> no, okay, I still, I, still got, I still got him connected here. What? What? <laughs> oh, my God. Where am I going? He's just going to go on the floor. Let's just put him over here. Yeah, he could just live in our office. He can live in box land. There you go, friend. Okay, good, thank you. All right, I don't even know if he's still connected or not. Okay. Just... <laughs> All right, 
We, uh, I'm going to take all this stuff to the post office. Uh, we're going to check in with Mojo, and then we'll find out how much we made yesterday. And I have a mini thrift haul. Ooh, thrift haul. Here's your moment of Mojo, guys. It's Thursday. It's been a rough day for everybody, him included. He is uh, sleeping it off. So we'll go to the post office and be back soon. All right, guys, uh, I tried to go to the post office, but because of the weather here in Dallas and all the ice, they were closed. So better luck tomorrow. Um, so now we get to find out how much we made. Okay. So the bagel shirt, we made 1922 in profit. Awesome. It sold promoted and I promoted it at 5%. Okay. So we did pay a hundred. We did pay a dollar twenty-five for promotion, but we still made twenty bucks off that in profit. Nineteen twenty-two. Okay. Uh, I was trying out the five percent thing. Right. Uh, the Vans tuxedo shoes sold promoted as well, but at one percent. Okay. So we ended up making seventy-four ninety-seven on those. Sweet. The pizza pineapple turtle guy. Mm -hmm. We made three sixty in profit off of. It's funny though because the bags we only paid a dollar for all. The junk bags were a dollar and seventy-five cents each, and. So that paid for two junk bags. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> the IKEA dish towels that were just sitting in our house, uh, we made three sixty-two on. Yeah, it's right. fine. The Born to Talk Bear, we made thirty-two sixty-one. It also sold promoted at five percent. Okay. So I don't know whether this would have sold on its own, or I don't know. I don't know the ins <laughs> and outs, but it's just it's more it's good data for us to keep track of. We yeah. paid two dollars in promotion for that, so we ended up thirty two sixty one, which I still think is good. It is, but the two, you know, I mean, the two plush that you promoted at five percent both sold overnight. I know, I know. Uh, the Eileen Fisher crepe pants did not sell promoted. It was one of the only things that didn't. Oh no, the Vans didn't sell promoted either. Oh no, they did. The dish towel didn't sell promoted. I think it's interesting to like keep track of this. Yeah. So we made forty ninety eight profit on those. So all together today, seven items, and Let me zoom in there real quick. Yeah. <laughs> we made three twenty four in sales and one ninety nine and one ninety five fifty five was our profit. Okay. Not bad. That's we do decent. try to make a hundred bucks a day each, so two hundred is our minimum goal, and we almost made it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that included the. Um, mystery box as well, which we okay. don't make a ton of profit on. We make 20 bucks on those. Okay. Uh, month to date, we're almost to 4,000. We okay. really want to hit five and 6,000 in profit. That's really where we want to be. Yeah. But in perspective, I just did and looked at last February, we've already crossed over. Last February, we barely broke into the 3,000 profit. Oh, wow. Okay. So we still have a couple days left. It is a short month, but hopefully we can make a grand. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. It would. Okay, so let's do a haul. All right, let's do it. Action. All right, we're going to start with this 1976 Dakin frog. Oh, man, how cute. We do really well with the vintage Dakin, and yeah, frogs in general do pretty well for us, so I'm excited about that. We have... <laughs> More vintage Dakin. This one has the tag. Oh, score. Uh, it's from... 1980. Okay. I'll try to get that little stain out and we will list him. More vintage Dakin, 1982. <laughs> Y'all, Oh my god, what even is that? This is how I feel today. Aww. Okay. <laughs> More. Oh my gosh. This is a vintage Gund. Okay. From 1980. Sweet. And it has the tag as well. Excellent. Excellent. This is Hamlet. We've sold Hamlet before. We have sold this exact thing before it did not have these really? accoutrements we have sold hamlet mm -hmm. okay i believe you i don't remember but i believe you okay. and there is more than just plush coming in yeah this yeah hall, so i'm just getting this out of the way yeah. this is a little miss sunshine tie with the tag from the uk i think or yeah. only available in the uk so i wish i felt like this today but i feel like this oh normally i'm here right but today i'm here <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, I got some belts. My friend Melissa, our dear friend Melissa. Yeah. She encourages us to get belts. She's very good at selling them. I am not, so we're going to try. This is Banana Republic, size 34, but it was, like, really worn in leather. It looks oh, really nice. nice. It's all leather. I didn't pick up anything that wasn't. <clears throat> um, and we got each of these for $2. 
So this is its counterpart in a white leather from Banana, same size. I might lot them. Yeah. Really we'll have nice. to we'll have to ask her for some belt photo tips because I'm not good at taking pictures of belts. Yeah, what you can also do is look at the solds on belts and kind of emulate somebody else's that have sold. Remember good these from the call. 90s? Oh my god, I totally do. So I got one of these from the 90s. It, this is all leather. And I always make sure when I'm getting belts that they're not blown out here. Right, right, right. Okay, and then this one. This one was something. Uh, I don't know. Brighton. That's why I got this. Oh, cool. Okay. I know a lot of people make money selling Brighton. I got to clean up the silver on the end of this. Tarnish. A little polish. A little polish. And the buckle needs some polish. But, but that'll, this is that'll nice. shine right up. Shine it. <laughs> and then this one's beautiful. Look at this cool oh, wow. floral tooling. Nice. But wait for the buckle. Oh, wait. That's the best part. Yo, what oh, is this? My God. It's signed on the back. Louis E. I'm going to look this up. But it is just. This is a fantastic costume piece. <laughs> Not only that, but you know what? I bet you I bet you there is a very niche market for handcrafted belt buckles. Yeah, I'm definitely going to list this one high. And then the final belt is it has this really cool buckle on it. Oh, that's neat. And it's also this is like cowhide leather or something. It says So we live in Texas. We get a lot of this kind of stuff. This handcrafted leather goods. Yeah. And it does go for good money. Look, somebody has drawn some little cacti there. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so those. And then I found this. I'm so excited. With oh, the lid. Hey. This is vintage Pyrex. Yeah, it is. I wish they had more. I looked, but they didn't. But this one with the lid is yeah. really, really good. We have a set of these I still need to list. I imagine that those smaller rectangular ones with the high edges are kind of not as common. Or am I totally off base? Um... Well, a lot of things happen. This stuff fades and scratches very easily with the solid. Okay. And then the lids get lost. Sure. So we have we have a set of the this similar style, but no lids, and it's not worth that much. But with the lid, I think we can do okay. All right. I only paid three, but less than three bucks. It was three bucks, but then I had a. I mean, 40%. it had to be worth something for you to pick up something breakable. That's true. <laughs> that we then have to pack up whatever it sells. Okay, so I got these, and they were half off, so they were three fifty, and these are Everlane, size fourteen. Right, let me get in there and focus that because it's very bright. There it goes. Thank you. This was from three different thrift trips. Okay. I should just note that. We just get a couple of things each time. These are the wide leg pants. Yeah. They should do okay. And you should be very proud. I almost picked up a Everlane cashmere sweater, mm -hmm. but I found a hole in it, See? so I put it back. Put it back. Uh, this is Anthropology, and again, it was half off, so it was 250 And it is an extra, extra small petite. Mm. Okay. Got and it. it's just a little romper. It's very, this is my size. Mm. Uh, I don't really wear rompers, so I am going to sell it, but I just wanted to make the point that there are people who exist that are extra, extra small, petite. I am one of them. We sell this size a lot. So people say it doesn't move. I hear it all the time. Well, I buy clothes on the internet, so other people do too. Just I'm just putting it out there. Specialty sizes sell for us. Yep. This was a counterpart, like Dan was checking out, and I ran over. <laughs> this is Madewell. It's a size 6, and it was half of this price. Oh, you can't see that at all because it's very bright. There we go. Okay, it, it's just a white. This is an actual, I would call this a blazer. Yeah. Because of the material. Right, and it's just a single button. Single button, and it has the contrasting buttons on the sleeves. So this is just a white blazer, but it's really high quality. That's nice. It's made of cotton, and I didn't see any flaws with it, so I... I definitely was willing to pay two fifty for it. Oh yeah, all day long. Uh, <clears throat> you must bought this. I did. You? That is from a Goodman brand. Here, like, it's not really. Can you hold it down a little bit? Perfect, just like that. There you go. This, uh, it looks really casual. Um, and I mean, it kind of is. It's unstructured. This brand it retails pretty high, and the resale is pretty decent. So. But be careful not to confuse it. this with, like, the good fellow. Right. There's a couple of good things that look like Similar, this, right. But this is, like, it's targets. two different words. It's good man, capitalized, good man brand. And it'll say all three words on the tag. Yeah. Okay, you bought these as well. These are Peter and Millar. Yeah, these are uh, Peter Millar, just, like, some chino pants. And we've sold two pair of these before. So I, I know they'll move. That's why I got them. The sell-through rate's really good. Yep. Okay, and then... I got this. This is a Notori. 
Yeah, it's so beautiful. Oh, that's nice. I absolutely love selling this brand. I will always sell it. Okay. Excuse me. It's getting blown up again. I love the bell sleeves on this. Notori is a sleepwear intimates brand. Well, I didn't I didn't really get the sleeve in there. Okay, let me do this one for you. Oh, very nice, very nice. This I'm going to price this very high. This is gorgeous. Um, they're known for their prints and luxury fabrics in the sleepwear. If you saw Inventing Anna. I was just about to say. She only wants Notori or higher end underwear. Notori is the most basic thing she'll wear. Right. In jail. I, like, do, no. <laughs> I do sell a lot of Notori when I can find it. It's, it's nice. It's, I wouldn't call it luxury. It's higher end. It's higher than Victoria's Secret. Right. Okay. Um, and then I also bought the Spanx. Um, you guys know this red label Spanx. Yes. Not Spanx assets. That's different. These come from the Spanx store. If you have a Spanx store in your mall, go look at it. I, ima I imagine you will be shocked at the prices. <laughs> and so are other people. So they go to eBay to buy this. This is a slip. Re like okay, just shaping slip. What's what's that cost retail? This is probably a hundred bucks. Oops. I buy them all the time for equity actors. Okay. I'm not allowed to put them in any undergarments that aren't brand new. And oftentimes actors need shapewear. And so I spend $100 on these all the time. Okay. Not of my money, but... Right. So that's why I know that people will go online to buy it because who wants to spend $100 on shapewear? Right. And it's also really not comfortable. So people donate this stuff all the time and it's barely worn. <laughs> because they're like, nope. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, I tried that for an event. Not anymore. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, and then the last thing we have... Oh my God, look at his little face with his tongue out. I can't... Hold on, there we go. He's so cute. I'm going to get this listed for Easter. He does have some staining I need to work on. He is from 1988. I don't know the brand. I don't either, but how could you look at that face and leave him at the thrift? <laughs> so that's the stuff I'm going to be working on. You can still see I have some drafting to do from yesterday. But this is the stuff I'm going to be working on to list tonight on our like list. Sweet. We we'll will see you, see you there. Thanks guys for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Uh, if anything we are saying is helpful or you're learning anything from us, please give us a like, a subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and we will see you at the oh, live. and comment. Don't forget. The comments are so good. Yeah, leave all those comments. If on... you have questions, tomorrow's a Q&A. That's right. Leave us questions for Q&A, and we will see you at 7.30 Central Time tonight at the live listing. Oh.